Welcome to FaceGen. For artists, a fast and flexible way to create realistic faces for your software. For developers, add powerful, easy to use tools for realistic face creation into your software. There are two ways to get started from FaceGen. You can create faces at random or you can start with a photograph such as this one on the right and use the FaceGen photo fit to turn that into 3D. Here is my face in 3D. I can edit it in a variety of ways. Here is a female version. Here is a hyper male version. Here is me 10 years younger or 10 years older. 20, 30. Caricature is a measure of the difference between a face and the average face of the same race age and gender. If I exaggerate the caricature, you can see that my face is skinny and bony compared to the average. Similarly, I can exaggerate the asymmetry and you can see that my mouth is not completely horizontal. I can adjust the racial origin from European towards African or towards Southeast Asian and so on. These are the holistic controls in FaceGen. There are also a whole bunch of more specific controls. With FaceGen's freeform deformations, I can simply point the mouse, click, and drag to adjust the shape of the face. With the asymmetric freeform deformation, I can adjust the tilt of my mouth back to horizontal. With the slider controls, under the Shape tab, we have over 50 symmetric controls. I can do everything from adjust the width between the eyes to the brown nose chin ratio. There are a whole bunch of asymmetric controls as well. I can adjust the eye height disparity. And similarly, under the texture tab, there are a whole bunch of texture controls. I can adjust everything from the darkness of the eye sockets to the eyebrows. That covers the various ways of editing a face that you've created uh, from a photograph. Of course, you can also create faces completely at random. Here I'm creating faces from all races, ages, and genders. If I have something more specific in mind, for instance, let's say I want just European faces that are male, that are about age 40, I can lock all those variables down and let's say I want them to be exaggerated caricatures, I can lock that down as well. Now I'm generating only caricatured European males of approximately age 40 until I find something that appeals to me. Next I can add a detail texture which adds in details such as skin pores and hair which are not captured by the face gen statistics. Give it the final touch of realism. Now I've showed two ways of creating faces in FaceGen. The next step is to apply them to a mesh. Everything that you've seen so far has taken place on a mesh with over 6,000 polys. FaceGen has a variety of meshes and UV layouts available. I'm going to swap in the default low-res mesh now and you can see the identical face applied to a mesh with under 1,000 polys. You're not limited to the various meshes supplied by FaceGen, which you can download from our site. You can also use your own. Here, a customer has used our customizer product to bring their own head mesh into FaceGen, and I've just applied the face to their mesh. You can see here is the identical face, and this time there are under a thousand triangles, not quads, comprising the face and the helmet. An interesting aspect of the customizer is that you can bring in helmets, hairstyles, glasses, and other accessory models, and they will fit automatically to any of the faces that you create in FaceGen. Here, for instance, are some glasses and long hair on the default model, which fit seamlessly. If I now go back and begin to generate more faces of different shapes, you can see how the accessory models automatically adjust to fit seamlessly. Another aspect of FaceGen faces 
is that morph targets automatically adjust to fit your faces as well. Here is a smile on this face. And here is an eye blink. If I zoom in on the eye blink and remove the texture, you can see that the eyelids meet exactly. If I go back and begin to generate more faces, no matter what size or shape of eye, the eyelids always meet exactly because of the way that morph targets are handled in face gen. Now the final step, once you've created your face, applied it to the particular mesh and accessory models that you want, is to export it. FaceGen supports a variety of export formats, Wavefront OBJ, Maya ASCII, LightWave Object, SoftImage.xsi, Vermal 1 and 97, and 3D Studio. When you export, you have a variety of texture image formats to choose from, and you can choose from exporting just the current models that you have loaded, or the neutral expression in an entire set of animation targets. FaceGen is available as a demo from our website, downloadable at facegen.com. It's a static Windows face modeling software. And all of the functionality that I've showed you so far is available for developers through our software developer kit. The software developer kit has some interesting aspects. Every face that you create in FaceGen is completely characterized by the positions of these sliders. That means that every face, highly personalized custom face, can be characterized in a 130-byte code, which is very useful for low bandwidth applications such as massively multiplayer games. Also with the SDK, you have access to our PhotoFit servers, or you can run your own PhotoFit servers, allowing the end users of your program to get their faces into 3D from one or two photographs. In order for consumers to do this, they have to take a proper photograph. The face must be looking straight ahead with the eyes open, the mouth closed, and the face in the neutral expression. They can use a consumer camera with a flash. Once they've done that, the rest is easy. They simply position five points and hit go. The face gen approach has many advantages over the very common face mapping approach that you see available commercially today. It gives you higher quality, more realistic faces very easily, and it also allows you to edit those faces in the powerful ways that you've just seen. For more information, please visit facegen.com.